Kevin Smith here at Golf Canada Centre in Calgary with Calgary's Jacqueline Lee, who's mm -hmm. playing professionally on the LPGA Tour. Great to catch up with you, Jacqueline. Yeah, great to catch up with you too. You know, I want to take you back to last fall. You qualify for the LPGA Tour. What was that moment like after all these years trying to get there? Um, it was really exciting. It was a bit of a whirlwind. Um, I had my parents come for the last two days of the Q series, so I did get to celebrate with them, um, as well as my best friend. She lives in Raleigh, so she was able to come out and support as well. So it was it was a mix of emotions for sure, because I I knew that I had just qualified for the LPJ, but at the same time I knew that there was a lot. Um, going on back at Ohio State. I knew that there's a lot of people involved. Yeah, and you had to make the decision then afterwards, mm -hmm. okay, I'm on the tour, when do I go on the tour? And you made yeah. the decision to turn pro in December and forego your final yes. semester. So talk about that decision. How hard was that? It was really difficult. Um, I kind of went back and forth on the decision for the first couple of weeks, and then I realized that, you know, ultimately my heart was in the place that I wanted to turn professional. Um, so I went to go tell my coach that, but at the same time, um, originally like the Vic Open wasn't a part of the LPJ schedule yet and it was just the Australian Open. And so I was thinking of when I should turn pro, if I was going to be able to turn pro um, in February right after the first uh, Ohio State tournament of the spring season to see if I could play one last event for them and kind of just help the team get off to a smooth start with the spring season before I turn professional. Right. Um, but then like for those six weeks after I'd made um, my status, I was talking to my lawyers and I was talking to the NCAA and USGA and compliance and all that <laughs> stuff and it wasn't possible to do that. Um, so it just ended up being that I turned pro in December. You turned pro, you mentioned the Vic Open, that was an event uh, in Australia in early mm -hmm. February. So yeah. you get on a flight for this around the world adventure, how excited were you? Uh, really excited because yeah. it was. I've been waiting a long time to be get to get <laughs> back into competition. I mean, my last tournament of 2018 was the Q Series. So for the first event of the 2019 season to be in February, I was just itching to get back out to play, um, and it was really cool to be yeah. out there. Yeah. You played two tournaments. The first mm -hmm. one you had it going for a while, missed the cut. Second tournament you made the cut and finished mm -hmm. uh, tied for 22nd. So yeah. overall, the two weeks. How did you play? How did you handle it? What was the experience like? Um, I would say that those two weeks, there was a bit of rest kind of that I needed to shake off a little bit. Not necessarily that I was nervous about being out on the LPJ, but just more so that I hadn't played a tournament in a while and just getting those nerves of um, playing and making those putts out there again um, that count and that they matter. It's not just a fun game that you're having with friends. Um, but no, I, I really enjoyed myself out there and especially with um, the Vic Open it being like the equal pay event with right. the men. I thought that that was a really cool touch. Um, but yeah, so with my respect to my game, I felt that um, it is kind of going in the direction that I wanted to. There are some things I would like to kind of tune um, for Arizona, but I'm yeah. happy. Mm -hmm. Any wow moments, someone you met in the locker room, someone that you hit balls next on the range, just what was it like being on the LPG Tour in Australia? Um, <laughs> I had I had the one moment where I was just kind of walking out of the locker room and Christina Kim was like, hi, like oh. Jacqueline, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh, like she knows who I am, how? <laughs> um, but, you know, like it's, it's just cool to be out there and I had um, the other Canadians out there with me as well and they've really made sure that I feel welcome on tour and a lot, I mean, apart from the other Canadians as well, like their friends as well, they've made sure that I've had a warm welcome and get me anything that I might need, so. So what do you think the gap is between you and a Christina Kim or Alexi mm -hmm. Thompson in B Park? I mean, you've been out there now. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, how do you get to their level? Um, honestly, I think a lot of it is mental game and maybe a bit of fine tuning of the short game as well. Um, I think that when you get to pro level, everyone is so similar in str ball striking capabilities or like short game and whatnot. It really just comes down to how you handle pressure mm -hmm. um, and just like pushing yourselves in ways that you didn't know. So I think that that's kind of kind of be my key this year. So we're here in Calgary. Mm -hmm. You grew up in Calgary. You're a Calgarian. You went through the Alberta golf system. Uh, what, what kind of support did you get from Alberta Golf uh, growing up to get you where you are today? Yeah, um, so we had like the Alberta team and with that we had training camps I think in January and we spent some time in the summers together um, and we I think that it was a great way for us to meet people um, who are our age both 
um, girls and boys who mm -hmm. were wanting to play uh, competitive golf and we could push each other that way. Um, and to also have opportunities like the Alberta Montana Ryder Cup or interprovincial teams. Um, just it also prepares you for college in terms of um, you're not the only one out there on the golf course. Right. You're part of a team. And so every decision that you make out there, it's not just affecting you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I've definitely been really grateful for Alberta Golf support and Golf Canada's support as well. What if there's some kids out there watching right now, mm -hmm. boys and girls, maybe in their mid-teens, parents watching maybe? Um, any advice you have for them? Can you think back to when you were a 15-year-old, Jacqueline <laughs> Lee? What, what would you have wanted to know back then? Um, honestly, my biggest thing when it comes to wanting to play a sport professionally or just accomplishing anything is that to have fun um, when you're working hard, but also knowing that you get what you work for. So if you want to make it to the LPJ or you want to make it to the NHL, whatever you want to accomplish in life, like you're going to have to put in the time and effort and some, yeah. like you are going to have to sacrifice some things um, and just understand what your priorities are. And I, I know that it's tough sometimes when you're 15 years old and you don't have your life figured <laughs> out yet, um, but it's just kind of following like what your heart desires and just going there and getting after it. It's awesome stuff. Couple more for you. First off, I can't believe how much you're balancing at the same time right now. <laughs> Traveling the world, LPGA tour, trying to finish your finance degree at the same time yeah. through Ohio State, and also you know doing media events like today. <laughs> How's it going managing all of that? <laughs> um, it's good. So I actually thought that once I turned professional, and I only have like two classes left at Ohio State to finish as opposed to like the four or five that I was normally taking. Um, I thought that I was gonna have a ton of time on my hands just to, you know, watch Netflix, be, yeah. <laughs> be a bit more normal and <laughs> relaxed. Um, but I'm actually, I am quite busy uh, when it comes to practice and working out because fitness is a huge part um, of professional sports as well, I believe. Um, and yeah, the school aspect of it, just because um, I am taking online classes to finish my degree, but they're not um, classes where I can just go online and finish all the modules all at once. They're a week by week basis that I have to kind of plan out in time. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, it's been busy, but I'm enjoying it. So what's next? You're, you're getting ready for the North American portion of your of your LPG schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your goals, uh, short term, long term? I just, I just want to hear what's next for you. Yeah, so I'm heading over to Arizona in a little bit to play at the Bank of Hope Founders Cup. Um, and then I got a busy schedule after that going to San Diego, Hawaii, LA, et cetera. So um, it's going to be a lot of different travel. And my goals are just to, you know, do the best that I can to prepare for each event and then play to the, my best, to the best of my yeah. abilities. I, I have small goals set um, in terms of like top tens and top fives and all that stuff, but at the same time, I'm just kind of focusing on the journey and the process and whatever happens out of that will, will happen. Thank you so much for <laughs> catching up with us here in Calgary and uh, good luck on tour. We'll be watching. <laughs> Thank you. All right, there's Jacqueline <laughs> Lee and I'm uh, Kevin Smith here at Golf Canada Centre in Calgary for Alberta Golf.